We had the uh, shuttle Atlantis. Uh, the folks in Florida did an amazing job getting this vehicle ready to go for us. Here I am uh, in my pumpkin suit, uh, my man Barry Butch Wilmore, Mike Foreman, our EV1, Bobby Satcher, the man with no pulse, <laughs> Randy Bresnick, my fellow Marine, and uh, Leland, you've already heard of him, Melvin. We get suited up uh, hours before. We had, walk out in front of these folks that really uh, will just clap at anything. We're not, we're not sure why they're there. Uh, and then this is really neat. You go driving around in the, uh, the Astro van, you got a helicopter gun escort, and you get this impression that something really big's gonna happen, but you're not exactly sure what. There's nobody to wave to, just a camera, because uh, we're up there all on our own, just us and our uh, closeout crew. I'm pretty much a businessman. Butch is a little nuts, <laughs> and some people, uh, you know, just can fit in in any crowd, and others just can't follow the prescribed rules. <laughs> we got the mid-deck strapped in. Uh, we got Mike and Bobby down there, uh, and then on the flight deck, uh, Butch and I with uh, Comrade and Leland behind us. KDR launch director. On behalf of the KSC Processing and Launch Teams, I wish you good luck, Godspeed, and we'll see you back here just after Thanksgiving. We're excited to take this incredible vehicle for a ride and meet up with another incredible vehicle, the International Space Station. So with that, thank you very much for all you've done, and everybody across the country that's participated, we're ready to go. NTD, with that, you are clear to launch Atlanta. Copy, clear to launch. Firing chain is armed. Sound suppression water system activated. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 3, 2, 1, 0, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis on a mission to build, resupply, and to do research on the International Space Station. It doesn't matter how old you are, this is uh, just an incredible ride and uh, you got a smile on your face going the whole way. It's an impressive vehicle, it's four and a half millions on, million pounds on the pad, seven million pounds of thrust waiting to get you off. The solids come off at about 150,000 feet. And if you have a normal launch, which we had the next significant event is the uh, roll to heads up, which happens about Mach 13. Coming up next here. Just a beautiful sight. The vehicle rolled, I was on the right side, so it rolled where I could see the ground. I could see from about New York City to the southern tip of Florida from about 300,000 feet. What a beautiful sight it was, and eventually we hit main engine cutoff and the, we separate from the tank. Right as soon as we hit Miko, we pulled out a camera, just wanted to show around, still in our, our uh, pumpkin suits. There's Scorch, our commander in the aft flight deck. Got to get those payload bay doors open so we can get some cooling on the vehicle. There's a starboard door coming open and then the port door. Just a beautiful sight as we start to look out at those aft windows and see the earth below. Our ohms tube berm to circularize our orbit. Floating there, and there's Comrade, a good second baseman. And there's those Ohms engines burning. Beautiful sight. And as soon as we hit uh, main engine cutoff, we are converting this vehicle from a rocket into a spaceship. So down on the mid deck, it's uh, chaos. As you can see, a lot of bags floating everywhere. You saw Leland getting out of his suit. I'm uh, buried down there. Uh, Bobby's getting out something to drink and uh, pulling out the procedures to see what we need to do next. Now we're up on the flight deck. This is actually flight day two now already. We're getting ready for the event of the day, which is to inspect our tiles to make sure we didn't have any damage. So we're pulling out the robotic arm, picking up the boom sensor system, uh, taking a look at the tiles. I'm downstairs cleaning up, which is uh, making himself look pretty. Comrade had a little time to work out and uh, then we uh, needed to get these spacewalk suits out of the airlock and temp stow them on the mid deck. Meanwhile, uh, astronauts I'd like to play with their food. 
Nice catch. Gave something for Butch to do there with all that hot air. He's blowing up a football. It's Rendezvous Day. It's uh, launched with a vehicle. Are they a uh, space station about three quarters of revolution ahead of us? And uh, our training team and our flight control team for Rendezvous teach us how to bring two vehicles that are traveling 17,500 miles per hour together using nothing but computations in our head. <laughs> Steve's from Rice, so he, uh, he, he tried to show me how that works. Rendezvous pitch maneuver is uh, standard these days to look at the under, underbelly of the vehicle. We had a, uh, sometimes you're just lucky, sometimes you're good. I think uh, we're just lucky. You get uh, through the pitch maneuver, and if the station's centered up, it uh, makes for a pretty sweet shot. Sometimes uh, it tends to wander off. Uh, station is uh, just an incredible uh, size. It's impressive to see it. And uh, here we go, uh, putting things back to normal speed. This view from our uh, centerline camera, and then uh, looking at the actual uh, docking adapter on station as it gets close, we'll show you a little live uh, cockpit view here. You can listen to the terminal phase of the rendezvous. Three, you're getting there, get ready. Mark, out the window. Yep, out the window. Ready one one runs when I saw them both. Ready with the timer? Ready. You got that? Coasting okay. in, coasting in. 18 inches. Nine inches. Ready? Two inches. Fire. It's the initial contact got captured. Capture. Station East Atlantis capture confirmed. No free drift yet. Still steady light. Flight day three was busy for us. We had to get uh, docked early and uh, we go through a leak check, get the hatches open, meet our six new crew members that uh, makes us a now united crew of 12. Uh, it was incredible to see all uh, everybody there and work together. So after docking, we had to get to work on the robotics. All the kids in here that play video games to be great robotics operators. We had the uh, logistics carriers in the payload bay. We had to get them out with the uh, shuttle arm and actually grab onto the carrier with the uh, big arm, the station arm. So that's ELC-1, that's the first one that Butch installed on the Nader port side of the truss. And then Randy and I, I mean here's uh, Scorch and I, were actually taking out ELC-2, and that was the second logistics carrier. It was about 14 tons of payload that we're gonna add to the space station. So here we're moving the arm. It's like a big video game, both on the shuttle and the station side. That's the target pin, we go down and grapple that, and there's the ELC-2, or the logi Logistics Carrier 2 coming out of the bay. Lots of uh, hardware for the station to help us uh, keep it going through 2015. So we're getting it ready to grapple from the shuttle side, I mean from the station side. Here's the uh, SSR mess with the big arm grappling. Steve, uh, uh, Frank DeWin and uh, Jeff were actually grappling this. And then uh, Jeff and I actually installed this on the starboard side of the truss. It's amazing views, looked out the window, Awesome, awesome robotics. We wanted to give you a quick view from uh, aft into the station where the Soyuz is located all the way to the shuttle on the very other side. So this is a little sped up video as you can see in this Russian segment here in the service module and then a couple other attached modules in the Russian segment. Eventually we make the turn and we start heading forward. Get into node one. Look at the guys working hard on, on EVA prep. And then into the lab, robotics workstations. There's Bob Thursk into node two, where we have other modules connected. And again, I know it's a little shaky, a little quick, but we'd be here a long time if we showed you everything. Butch really moves that fast, anyhow. Yeah, I do. <laughs> into the shuttle airlock now, making the 90 degree turn into the shuttle mid deck. You'll see Scorch here in a second doing a little water ops. We did keep him busy. And into the shuttle flight deck. And it is a beautiful sight inside as well. Well, as you can see, we did a lot of robotics work, but we also did a lot of EVA work. Every day as we were docked to the space station, we were either getting ready for an EVA the next day or we were doing an EVA. So here, uh, a couple of us moving some suits around, getting them positioned in the airlock, getting ready for EVA number one. And here is Bobby Satcher in his suit and myself on the right there in my suit. Uh, we got a couple of people helping us out, Butch and Nicole, making sure we got the suit all strapped in, strapped on just right, all the locks checked and double checked. 
you know, in space, you got to have somebody help you put your pants on. So we had that help there. Come out on EVA one, and uh, we were off to the races. Uh, beautiful sight once we got out there. Picture of me down here in the payload bay from the aft camera. And there's an important message I sent to my Army brethren. Uh, <laughs> then we uh, had this uh, spare S-band antenna. That was our first task. Bobby was flying over on the arm. There's a view from his helmet camera down into the payload bay. And I was uh, turning some bolts to loosen that uh, antenna. And here's Leland and Butch driving him around on the arm. And uh, I handed this antenna off to Bobby, and then he took it away. And uh, we went over to install this thing on, uh, on the space station. So we get this thing installed. There's a beautiful reflection of Bobby, one of the radiators out there. And here's Comrade hard at work as our IV crew member. Uh, so I was the lucky one that got to uh, do surgery on the arm, as you can see here, making use of some surgical skills. Basically, we uh, were lubing the uh, end effectors that were on the station, and I was the lucky one to get to ride on the arm and get some fantastic views. Moving over now to the uh, Japanese segment of the station where there's also a robotic arm and repeating the maintenance procedure on the Japanese arm. Here's a picture of uh, Leland and Butch. And here we are getting ready for uh, EVA 2. You can see us uh, halfway suited up at this point. Always needing help from our friends to get our pants on, as Mike mentioned. Um, heading outside, our big tasks on this one to uh, relocate some antennas. Here's one of the uh, uh, antennas was on the very top part of the station. You can see us silhouetted against the uh, blackness of space as we're installing this antenna and putting the uh, little feelers uh, that are up on top of the antenna portion out in its new location. Here's a view from uh, Mike's helmet cam while we're up there. And then you can see on the top right of the screen the commander of uh, Atlantis waving in the window. And then uh, you hear us talk about spacewalks, but as you can see, there's no feet involved. This is all crawling with your hands. So you walk with your hands for about six hours, and this is the route we would take back to the airlock when we're either uh, finished from the EVA or going back to pick up uh, additional uh, spare parts. So then uh, once you're back inside, you know, as much effort as it took to get in, well, you don't have gravity to help pull you out of, or help you fall out of the suit. So as you can see, Butch is standing on Mike's thighs, holding the arms up, and trying to push him out as Mike wheels his way out of the suit. It's a little more challenging, but uh, just like everything with space flight, you can use a little help from your friends. Almost like birthing a baby calf. <laughs> There's some of our robotics folks helping out with those EVAs. Then uh, EVA 3 is coming up here. Um, Mike took off the training wheels, and Bobby and I got to go out together on this one, uh, closing the thermal cover that uh, goes into the crew lock. This one, our, our main big task was to take the uh, oxygen tank that was on the cargo platform that we took out of the shuttle payload bay, that you can see at the bottom right of the picture there, and attach it to the airlock. So Bobby and I, our job was to uh, release it from the cargo platform. And you can see Bobby in the uh, helmet cam video here. He's putting his camera away. I'm coming up on the right side of the view. And what we'll do is we'll take this platform and we'll turn it 90 degrees so that the grapple fixture is oriented so Butch and Leland can grab it with the big space station arm you see on the upper part of the picture. Here comes the rotation now. Only about 1,500 pounds of uh, tank, which fortunately doesn't weigh anything on orbit. It's just a little massive, so you gotta, gotta move it, it's kinda slow. Then our uh, robotic studs uh, grab it with the arm and fly it away to the airlock while we scurry back like uh, little ants back to the airlock to go ahead and attach it. We were fortunate enough uh, with our hardware on orbit and you know the fact that we had a great train team here on the ground we got about six hours of get ahead tasks complete so it is almost like four 
EVAs worth of tasks done in three EVAs. We're very fortunate with uh, everything that it worked. And here's the, the happy guys at the end of it. Another special event uh, we all got to partake in was uh, the announcement of uh, my birth of my daughter. As you can see, you get to be a proud papa and pass out cigars just like you are on Earth. It's just tobacco's a little forbidden, and so we go with the uh, bubble gum. Uh, you got to be careful. Uh, our philosophy was work hard, play hard. <coughs> he didn't really hit me that hard. <laughs> and uh, here, they're actually going for some raisinets that are floating. We did a lot of uh, science. Uh, this is Dr. Bob Thurst showing a plant experiment. We also did some cell biology and some experiments with uh, animals. So the space station is really uh, kind of cranking now with all of the science going on, literally and figuratively. And one of the few orthopedics experiments we did was actually looking at how our heights changed. We all got taller except for, I think, Butch. <laughs> we also have to do a transfer in space, and you don't really use your arms to transfer things, you use your legs so you can pull yourself through the hatches. There's Comrade going by with a big uh, piece of payload as Bob's working. I think uh, Comrade's gonna do the Superman move. Look, Bob, no hands. <laughs> transfer took place and we went to uh, exercise. Here's Butch on the resistive exercise device doing squats. Scorcher on the same machine doing bench press. We had to work out really hard in space so those guys could land properly. Mike's on the cycle ergometer spinning his tile as he's touring doing the Tour de France. Here's uh, the Colbert. Jeff's running a marathon, and Roman's actually filming a little bit of video in HD. Also, food's very important in space, so we had our Euro night over in Node 1. We're having uh, samples of uh, cow, calf uh, cheeks, and plum wine sauce, and a number of other little delicacies that we enjoyed. We're all eating with our spoons. There's Nicole, Bobby, and myself. Comrades getting a spoonful, floating it to his mouth. There's Scorch finishing, and Mike is saying, mmm, mmm, good. Last transfer item was 914. <laughs> we pushed Nicole over to uh, the shuttle side, and they were saying our goodbyes. That was the last item. I called down to the ground to see what the weight was to make sure it was OK. <laughs> they didn't tell me the weight, though. Scorch and uh, Jeff saying goodbye, one last goodbye, Army, Navy kind of thing. And here's Mike on the other side. We're about to get into our vehicle. Last little stupid astronaut tricks, water bubbles, and Bobby uh, doing a little nose bump with the water. There's Mike sporting the STN-129 ensemble. Get ready for undocking here. We're getting all our rendezvous tools together. One last look at the station close up before we say adios. And one last lifesaver. Breath mat. Physical separation. TCS is good. Okay. Which Panels two? are clear. I got LBLH. Starting to back away slowly. Eventually, we get out to about 400 feet. We start to do a loop completely around the station, 360 degrees. It takes place at roughly 600 feet from the station. And uh, the guy that's flying it has the worst view because everybody's got to get up and take pictures and see the views. And <laughs> Mike and Scorch up front helping us out. The beauty of station, there's a little panoramic down below as we uh, do execute our fly around a little sped up. And the station is, is just absolutely beautiful with the sparkling silver and the contrast of the gold solar arrays. The detail, you look at this and you think the, the literally hundreds of thousands of man hours put into on the ground preparing this vehicle to go up to space piece by piece. In a beautiful, beautiful sight it is. But eventually we do have to say so long and affect that burn to leave and start heading back. We did have a few days with a little bit of extra time to look out the window and see the beauties of, uh, of the earth below. In fact, a couple of homes burns. There's Nicole having fun with it down on the mid-deck. And again, like I said, just, just really remarkable sights. That's beautiful there. I think that's Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> and a little bit of last uh, playing we call this Stiction. Fun with water and M&Ms.
once we got uh, Leland out of the M&Ms, we uh, finally got serious about getting home. Leland's dropping his, not actually dropping it, but uh, a tenth of a G is what that acceleration demonstrated as we uh, attempt to go from uh, Mach 25, here's the golden number. Everybody earned their patch that day, uh, actually hit the number, uh, but taking out that uh, eight and a half minute ride, a 3G acceleration up to that speed, trying to slow down by uh, burning halfway around the earth uh, to reenter, uh, coming up the coast of Florida, beautiful clear day. Uh, and here I am, I, I'm actually a Harrier guy where I'm, I actually stop first and then land. And so here we are whipping by at 300 knots. I'm trying to figure out how we uh, land, then stop. Butch did his job. He got the gear down, thank goodness. Uh, and the shoot, we end up uh, rolling to a stop down in front of uh, a very happy crowd that gets to see the, uh, the vehicle that they did such a great job preparing, uh, arrived back to them the day after Thanksgiving so they can start working for STS-132 to get this thing prepped again. Truly the amazing thing is to get outside of the shuttle you've been in for 11 days, take a walk around and see uh, the, the home you had and what an incredible job it could do. The uh, near 30,000 pounds of equipment that it drops off the environment you work in, the, uh, the docking ability, and all the functions it can perform.